So this brings us to yet another very interesting part of this chapter and that is the RMS speed or the root mean square speed of a molecule of a gas. Well, it may sound complicated, but stay with me and you'll see that it is not as complicated as it sounds. So to understand the concept of RMS speed, let us take n moles of an ideal gas in a cubicle box of volume V and we will keep the temperature of the box at T. Then the question is how you can relate the pressure P of the gas that it exerts on the walls and the speed of the molecules. So what's really happening inside the box is that the molecules in the box are moving randomly in all directions with varying speeds and they collide with each other and also hit the wall and then bounce off it. But for now, we ignore the fact that the molecules are colliding with one another and consider the collisions that are happening are with the wall only and that too are elastic in nature or there is no loss of kinetic energy of the molecules post collision. So take this molecule that has mass m and velocity v and is about to collide with this face of the wall. What you can see here is that the y component of the velocity is not changing after the collision but the velocity does change in the x direction which actually gets reversed. So if the x component of the velocity gets reversed with no loss in magnitude, the momentum of the particle changes only in the xx direction. If the velocity in the x direction was let us say vx before the collision and becomes minus vx after collision, then we can say the change in momentum is let us call it delta px where x denotes the change of the momentum in x direction. This should equal minus mvx minus mvx which equals minus 2 mvx. Hence the momentum delivered to the wall is plus 2 mvx assuming momentum is conserved and you can use this equation to understand the change in momentum of the wall that is momentum of the molecule plus the momentum of the wall before the collision should equal the momentum of the molecule plus momentum of the wall post collision and the equation we get is mvx plus 0 is equal to minus mvx plus the momentum of the wall which is post collision and we see that the momentum of the wall post collision equals 2 mvx and I would like you to be careful and note that the P here is representing momentum not the pressure. Now we can safely assume that this molecule will hit the wall repeatedly and we can find the time delta t taken before it hits the wall again. So how you can find this time delta t is that you note the fact that this molecule bounces back after traveling length 2L at a velocity vx. So time taken delta t is equal to 2L which is the length traversed divided by the velocity at which it was traveling. So uh, a momentum of 2 mvx is delivered every 2L upon vx seconds. Now this statement is confusing to the student sometime. So just think how much time has elapsed before the second hit to the wall actually happens. It is just about delta t that is the moment delta t gets clogged the second collision happens. So if delta p momentum is changing every delta t seconds the rate of change of momentum is delta px upon delta t which is equal to 2 mvx upon 2l upon vx which equals mvx square upon l. But we know that Newton's second law which is f is equal to ma can also be written as the rate of change of momentum or the force delivered to the wall. Well this therefore is the force exerted by one molecule. But if this was the only molecule then the force on the wall would have been uh, what should I say pulsating that is happening every delta t seconds. But there are billions of molecules hitting the wall 
and that makes a force on the wall steady and to calculate the total force delivered to the wall we will need to add up the force delivered by each molecule that hits a wall and while doing so we must remember that the velocity of each molecule could be different so if the total force delivered is fx then the pressure on the wall is equal to fx upon a which is equal to fx upon l squared so we can write the total force is fx is equal to mvx1 square upon l plus mvx2 square upon l plus so on till you get to the nth or the last molecule which is mvx square of nth molecule divided by l where now vx1 vx2 vx3 etc represent the velocity of each molecule in x direction and vxn is the velocity of the nth particle or let's say the last particle and therefore the pressure p is the total force divided by the area impacted which we know is l squared so we write the pressure is equal to fx upon l squared which is equal to this expression and you can see we can pull l square and l out and what you get in the denominator is l cube so the equation you get is m upon l cube and within brackets the squares of the velocity of all particles which have been added up over here now again n is the number of molecules in the box so there should be n terms in this bracket that is one uh, term for each molecule so if we divide and multiply with n here this part of the formula is then nothing but the average of the square of the velocity and let's call this vx square average which is the average value of the square of the x components of all the molecular speeds so let us write p as n m divided by l cube into vx square average now since n is equal to small n into avogadro's number we rewrite the equation as p is equal to n m n a which is avogadro's number divided by l cube into vx square average but we see that m into n a or m into avogadro's number is the molar mass of the gas or the mass of one mole of it you can also see that l cube represents the volume of the box so we go ahead and write this equation as p is equal to nm vx square average upon the volume v now if you take any molecule we can say that the square of its velocity is equal to the sum of the square of its respective components of vx square plus vy square plus vz square and because the molecules are moving randomly in all directions we could say that the average speed of the square of velocity of each component should be the same or vx square should equal vy square should equal vz square in other words since there are millions of molecules moving randomly in all directions there is no reason for us to believe that the average of vx square vy square or vz square for all molecules should be any different and hence we say they are all equal therefore we can say that vx square is one third of v square so we can simplify this equation further as this so the square root of v square average is actually the average speed and the scientist term it as the root mean square speed of the molecules and give the symbol vrms in fact if you go by the name it has been given it makes things a lot simpler you square the speed of each molecule add them up and take the average and then you take the square root and you can clearly see that it is different from simply taking the average of all speeds and we can rewrite this equation as most physicists would write and that is this now this equation is interesting since it connects the what you see macroscopic property of the gas like pressure 
to its microscopic property like velocity of the molecules. So we see dependence of pressure of gas on velocity of the molecule. And if we combine this equation with the ideal gas law or PV is equal to nRT by substituting nRT in place of PV here. So we take V here and then rewrite this like this. What we get is VRMS is equal to under root 3RT upon M. And here are some RMS speeds found by using this equation. And we find that speeds can be really high. So if you take the speed of a hydrogen molecule at room temperature, the RMS velocity is 1920 meters per second, which is five times faster than the speed of sound in air or faster than a bullet shot out of a gun. And if you take a molecule of hydrogen on the surface of the sun, where the temperature is very high, the RMS velocity can be more than 80 times greater than at room temperature. And you might want to note that the RMS speed is just the average speed and many molecules could be moving at much higher speeds and some at lower speeds. And if we talk about velocity of sound in gas, what has been found is that the speed of sound in a gas is proportional to the RMS velocity of the molecules of that gas, but always lower than the speed of the molecules. And there's an interesting explanation to this, which says that since in a sound wave, the propagation happens by way of disturbance of molecules that is passed on from one molecule to another by way of collisions. Therefore, the wave cannot move any faster than the average speed of the molecules and the speed of the sound has to be somewhat lower than this average molecular speed. And also since not all molecules of the gas move in the same direction as the wave, the speed of the sound wave gets beaten down a little. So while the RMS speed of let's say a nitrogen molecule is 517 meters per second, the speed of sound in nitrogen is only 350 meters per second. Well, a very often asked question is that why does it take so long for a perfume to reach from one part of a room to the another if the molecules travel so fast? So the answer is that while perfume molecules may have a high speed, their movement away from the bottle is slow because the molecules collide a lot with each other, thereby slowing down their forward movement. In fact, it's, it's like a platoon of soldiers who can march forward very fast on their own, but if they keep colliding with each other as they move forward, their overall movement ahead will slow down. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos.